Shooters, reloaders, and conversationalists, welcome to Pounder Labs. Join us as we talk about Recluse 45, a lube for cast handgun bullets. Lubrication of cast or swage bullets is very important. These are made out of lead and lead alloys. We're interested in friction control, minimizing leading, and we also have environmental and health safety factors to consider. This has traditionally been done with a lube sizer, like shown here. You'll have a die, a punch, and the lubrication is delivered in these sticks. Some are done at room temperature. Other lubricants require a heating plate. But this is the result as shown here. Here we see a crimp cantalore. We have three grease cantalores, and this has a gas check. Recently now, you can also tumble with high-tech coating as shown here, multiple colors. It's a liquid and can be baked on. You also have options with spray or tumble with powder coatings like shown here. We're gonna focus in on a tumble method using legacy bullet lubes. In all cases of lubrication, it's important to understand the application. In our case, we're interested in low velocity cast bullets for pistols. Uh, we want a lubricant that will flow into knurled cantalores. We want something easy to prepare and apply, and of course, low cost. Recluse 45 is a blend of paste wax and Lee bullet lube. Uh, it was originally proposed by a cast bullet member called Recluse somewhere around 2009. This in turn grew out of studies done by the NRA technical staff uh, with ALOX 2138. The work was done over the 50s and 60s by Colonel Harrison. And uh, you can read in his publication, Cast Bullets, the history and the experimentation they did. The current uh, formulation they settled on was 50% uh, ALOX 2138, 50% beeswax. Recluse 45 formulation is 45% paste wax, 45% lead bullet loop, and 10% mineral spirits and this is measured by volume. This uh, lubricant is widely discussed and used. We would like to mention this isn't a Pounder Lab creation. Our point of view is this is a 50-50 blend uh, with mineral spirits for viscosity control. But we do want to acknowledge the author and we just simply call this Recluse 45. ALOX doesn't stand for aluminum oxide. It's a solvent-soluble calcium rust preventative, and it's part of a family of advanced corrosion preventatives. We're particularly interested in ALOX 606, which is in the heavy film category. ALOX was a corporation formed back in Niagara Falls, New York, around 1926. Republic Powdered Metals was formed uh, after World War II, it's referred to as RPM, and they acquired ALOX in 1977. In turn, Lubrosol acquired ALOX in 2000, all the brands and products from RPM. And in 2011, Berkshire Hathaway acquired Lubrosol and keeps it as a wholly owned subsidiary. And this is where we stand today. Recluse 45 consists of three components, a furniture paste wax, the preferred be in the SC Johnson brand, but you might also find Minwax could use in a pinch. In the Johnson wax, there's uh, solvent, stoddard, solvent naphtha, odorless mineral spirits, and three waxes, carnauba, microcrystalline, and paraffin. If you study Colonel uh, Harrison's work, you'll realize all three of these things bring some value to bullet lubes. We end up with a density of about 0.8. The other element here is uh, the Lee Liquid Alox Bullet Lube in the familiar white and um, red squeeze bottle. And this is a mixture of 50% uh, Lubrizol Alox 60655, which in turn is 55% Alox 606, 45% Mineral Spirits, and the other 50% is LPA 142, which is another Mineral Spirit type solvent. And it has a density of 0.8. Uh, the ALOX 606 has a density of about 0.9, ALOX 350, another preservative is about 0.92. So when you cut it with the mineral spirits, which has a density of about 0.76, you end up with about 0.8.
Blending this lubrication is quite straightforward. Let's take an example of making 100 milliliter batch. Of the wax, we're interested in 45% by volume. If we correct for density, we come up with 36.5 grams. The bullet loop, 45% there, but we also see the density is about 0.8, so that comes out 36 uh, grams. So you can see whether you look at it as either volume or uh, weight, it comes out 50-50. You can easily measure the 10% mineral spirits in a, in a small graduated cylinder. Uh, we take the paste wax on, on the balance, weigh out the target weight in a tarot beaker, and we melt it with a low heat. We then uh, heat the uh, bullet lube uh, bottle in, in, um, in, a, in a water bath, make sure you vent that. And then with the melted wax on the balance, we just squirt in the bullet lube to get our target weight, swirl to mix. This is where we suggest you, you look at the, the solution and just see if the flow is right. Uh, as you've seen from the previous slide, there's already a lot of solvent in this, and we think you might not need any additional solvent, and you should just add it to get the viscosity you want. And you can just uh, slowly add it to the mixture, uh, transfer to your storage bottle, and uh, cool before it solidifies. Uh, we heartily recommend you use a hot plate. We have a laboratory model, but you can get inexpensive ones online, and we encourage you to do that. Uh, don't do this over flame. You wouldn't heat gasoline over a flame, so we suggest you don't heat this solution over a flame either. And also, don't think about using a microwave. That's not what it was designed for. And finally, this is the safety placard. And anytime you see one of these where the numbers aren't all zero, you should be paying attention. We routinely use HTC for our bullet lubrication, but our study of cantalores put us on a path to study uh, Recluse 45. In terms of applying, we're trying several techniques, uh, after cast, lube, optionally size, a light coat. This didn't work out well because when we went to put on cantalores, the, uh, the coating is, is, is too soft to roll in the, uh, in the cantaloring tool. We then tried lube and size and then lube again to put a heavier coat on and that just made things worse. So what we ended up with is what we call kind of a type C model. We size and then um, we put the cantalures on and then we go back and put the, uh, put the lube on afterwards. Uh, the tumbling technique we use is to water bath heat the Real Goose 45 till it's free flowing. We uh, low heat the batch of bullets uh, about 150 degrees F, kind of using our, our powder coating oven here. Uh, if we're going to do a second coat, we really don't feel that we need to heat. It's going to be uh, the uh, coating on top of the coating, and I don't think the heat buys you much there. Uh, in a tumble tank, we add the bullet bat, add small amounts of Recluse 45, swirl and tumble in the open tank, monitoring the application. Uh, if you need to add a little bit more, then you'll, you can see it form on the, uh, on the surface of the bullet. Uh, we then transfer to mess, mess drying trays and let this air dry. Uh, it doesn't make sense to try to heat this in the oven, and we find that usually overnight cures the coating. We originally planned to have little video clips of preparing the wax and adding the lead bullet lube and showing the tumble application, but realized probably most of our viewers are familiar with this and maybe we're just getting a little lazy. Either way, feel free to add something uh, in the comments section on the video or reach out to us uh, privately through the Pounder Lab website if you have any questions. Let's look at some results. This is the truncated flat point from the Lee mold that we do in-house and this drops with our alloys at about 124 grains. Here's the high-tech coating as we size, run the cantalores, coat and size again. Uh, it adds a lot of workflow because if we add the cantalores after we put the coating, it's brittle and we don't like to have that film corrupted. Here we show the uh, Recluse 45 where we've sized cantalores and coated and that works fine. Over here you can see the difference between one and two coats of Recluse 45. These are 147 grain flat points. As we were doing our investigation with Recluse 45, we came across the bullet supplied from Bear Creek Supply out of California, which answered all of our dreams. This is their 147 grain. 
uh, gone through sizing, and then you can see how easy it is to roll the cantaloupe on. Their proprietary coating is softer than HTC, and when we roll the cantaloupes in, we don't corrupt the finish, which is exactly what we were looking for. But there's also many other bandages. Their proprietary coating seals like HTC, but it's also very slick. We've demonstrated a 10, 15% increase in velocities and virtually have eliminated all issues with leading. So it's a very durable coating, but yet uh, pliable enough to put our cantaloupes on and uh, we get velocity increases and it completely coats the very durable finish. Here's uh, for comparison, a, uh, a very handsome bullet from uh, Hoosier uh, covered with uh, HTC that's gone through sizing. And you'll see that uh, the newer generation of bullets don't have the, uh, the lubrication or grease cantaloupes. So we get a little bit more room and cases to work with because the bullets are shorter. And in our case, it gives us a lot more real estate to add cantaloupes. Here's a 200 grain semi-wad cutter, which typically is used for uh, precision pistol. Here's our in-house cast with um, HTC after through the sizing. Here's a very nice example from Brazos Precision, which is ATC in size. And again, we have the uh, extruded uh, bullets from um, Bear Creek. And you can see that uh, the cantaloupe takes very, very nice. And again, being shorter now, because we don't have to allow for these uh, grease cantaloupes, it gives us more room to work within the case for um, uh, different densities of powders. So we find this to be a very, uh, very good supplier of, of bullets. And this is what we use going forward. And they're available in every color, just as long as it's black. Seating our coated bullets in cartridge cases should be something done carefully. We don't want to shave the bullet base. We don't want to weaken the coating. And in the case of Recluse 45, we don't want to smear that soft coating. Let's look at our seating options. The traditional model is to use a flare. You want to make sure the bullet's coming in square. Uh, expander types expand the brass a little further on the top, making it easier to get it to get the bullet coming in straight. And you can even put it in a little deeper and have a, um, have a flare on it as well. In either case, you want to end up with uh, this position after you finish seating, and then you do crimping as a, uh, a second step. Um, and uh, whether that's the taper or the roll crimp, You'll see something here called base mirroring bulge. Uh, this isn't to be confused with Glock bulge or with the kind of overpressure bulge you see down here for uh, highly loaded rounds. Instead, you'll see a bit of a whisper of what we call the Coke bottle effect. And a very little bit of that, like say a nine millimeter or a whisper of it in 45, doesn't cause any problem at all. Now, if you actually see your bullets look like a Coke bottle, you got a problem. We want to do our flare and expansion at the, uh, at the powder charge stage. So here is a typical uh, Dillon uh, powder funnel, and this is the HTC powder funnel, which has a slightly larger diameter and is longer. We have recently completed a private client project evaluating HTC funnels. And based on the experiences gained, they gave the go-ahead to share this content. Kind of think of it as a public service announcement. Let's look at a cartridge case. Sammy has a lot to say about the dimensional factors, almost all of them dealing with the outside. The only thing they discuss on the inside is the volume. So all the manufacturers have a lot of latitude on how they build up these cases. And in terms of metallurgical factors, Sammy doesn't have anything to say. But every time we resize, we flare, we crimp, and we fire, uh, fire around, the brass case gets worked hardened. So it changes its metallurgical uh, condition as a function of time and use. So the funnels we're talking about are for the Dillon 550. They're offered by Photo Escape, who calls them powder transfer units. Um, they're available unique tech, and we evaluated for 9 millimeter 45 ACP and the one for the 38 Special Hollow Base Wad Cutter. What we find is that 
uh, the width of the um, the width of the funnel stretches the brass further, and so you might overstretch that brass. Also, depending on the wall taper, uh, going deeper with the HTC funnels can cause a bulge in the case here. So our position is that when we get to the crimping stage, the crimp die is primarily designed to go ahead and take out the flare and condition a pressure across the case to make a nice finished round. We think that with the potential of pushing that brass out so far and so deep, that relies too much on the crimp, uh, the crimp die to get the ground back in shape. And uh, you might say, well, let's just cramp up, crank up the crimp die. Well, the problem you run into there is the brass is going to spring back a little bit, but the lead alloy won't. So it's counterintuitive that the more you squeeze that brass case, when it relaxes, the bullet actually is in there with less, less pressure. So what you might end up with is the hoops rest might be too low to prevent bullet setback or crimp jump. So whether you use these funnels or use the traditional um, Dillon, that's all up to you. But we certainly recommend you do the uh, bench press check and to make sure you don't get any, uh, any setback of the bullet in the case. Now, if you want to run real low hoop stress with a, with a light grip, um, either to, um, uh, because it's performance advantageous or you want to add some extra security, it's very easy to add a stop cantilever with the ultimate cantilevering tool shown here. Here's an example of a, of a factory crimp that has been reloaded, of course, and the crimp is kind of blown out, but just shows you what it looks like. And here's crimps that we've added for the 45 ACP, what we call 20 mil and 30 mil. So you can set that up to get as much crimp in there as you want to make sure that you don't get bullets set back. And so we wanted to share this information so as you go forward and, and regardless of what techniques you use for seeding, double check and avoid setback. Bullet lubrication is very important and your selection should be based on several factors. The intended application, performance, cost and availability. Uh, we would like to extend a special thank you to Steve Miller, owner of the uh, Bear Creek Supply, makers of the coated cast and extruded bullets. Here's their website. We certainly recommend you visit and talk with Steve about uh, bullets for your application. If you'd like to learn more about lubes, uh, you, there's the Los Angeles Silhouette Club. Here's their link. has a lot of information. And then, of course, the cast bullet site has uh, even more detailed information about different recipes. And as uh, Archie, our mascot, says, have fun, be safe. This completes our presentation. And as you're thinking about subscribing, please look over these important notes and disclaimers. They're here for your protection and ours. Thanks for watching. Be safe. See you soon.